Google DeepMind created an AI that's able to copy anyone's personality by just spending two hours with them down to the person's idiosyncrasies. And then they created an AI that beat the world's best Go player. They're out here revolutionizing the world with brand new technology, and today they're launching something that's going to revolutionize intelligence for billions of people. I flew to London last week to get an early look at it. Here's what it is. So if you watch Google I.O., you'll remember this video. It was our first look at an AI assistant that has a photographic memory, a personality, and a helpful ability like the Iron Man Jarvis assistant. Kind of feels like science fiction, but it's in real life. And it was made by Google's AI company called Google DeepMind. Google acquired DeepMind in 2014 with the idea that this will be like their moonshot ambitious AI project company. And in their eyes, every project has to impact billions of people and make their lives better. This one is called Astra. It's supposed to be a universal assistant where it can know everything about you, have a photographic memory, be able to pull for multiple large language models. You can ask very specific questions. I tested it on not only a phone, but also smart glasses, which we'll get to because Google is kind of like the OG smart glasses company. And this is possibly their first foray into it. Only a few of us got to test it. So I'll share that experience a little bit later in the video, but let's pop open Astra because I think that in order to really understand why it's incredible, you got to see it in action. So this is Google's latest phone and it's running a beta program of Astra that I tested out in London. And I'm going to show you it right now. All right. Hey, Jacqueline. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How um, are you today? I'm filming a YouTube video right now and I would I love am. your take on lighting. And so I'm going to show you the room and then I would love your take on what color temperature this light is because that will help me set the white balance of the camera. Based on the visuals, the light you are using appears to be a soft box. It is difficult to precisely take determine best the color guess. temperature from the... It is tough to offer a specific temperature without more information, but it seems to be a cool daylight temperature potentially around 5,000 K or higher. The softbox itself can alter the light quality. That was pretty accurate, actually. Okay, what is the name of the person I'm that I'm a... showing you right now? I introduced you to him earlier. The person you're showing me is Vishoy. He was wearing a gray sweater when you introduced me to him. <laughs> there he is. Okay, so that is an example of Astro's photographic memory. Previously with chatbots, let's say like OpenAI's ChatGPT or even Google's Gemini, you have like this one main input source, which is your typing. And it's amazing, you type something in, you get an output, very helpful. But really where AI comes live and is revolutionized is when there are multiple inputs that lead to the output. So in this example, we're able to use the camera on the phone and then also my voice to give more context. So that allows for things like asking Astra someone's name. Like imagine you go to a networking event, you meet a bunch of people and Astra has this memory to know like, oh, that person was Bashoy and this person was April. But then also you can ask it things like, where did I leave my keys? Or something else really cool, summarize a book. So unlike asking a different AI model like Gemini or ChatGPT to summarize a book and then having it pull information from online, you could actually show the camera the book, quickly swipe through it, like an instantaneous swipe, and the camera will be able to pick up on what all the pages are about and give you a really precise summary. This blew my mind when I saw it. That is unbelievable. It just makes it feel like you're supercharging your own intelligence. Um, and so that's like for more intellectual things. The other example that they showed us in London was a math example. And the equations were different images adding up to a number. Something you would honestly probably see in like 10th grade math. So what gives it this unique ability to actually help you with math is the ability for it to explain what it's doing. So it doesn't just give you the answer, but you can actually then further ask me questions and have it like personalized to your own learning experience. And that's because it's using the live real-time video feed and then also your voice to input answers. And it's all built off of Gemini's model. One of the things that I've noticed with Astra is that it likes to ask a lot of follow-up questions. So it's kind of always listening when you have it on. You can't just like quickly open it, ask a question, and then keep it on the screen without going off of it because the microphones are always on. As it keeps improving, I would love if it became context aware of when I'm talking to other people versus when I'm talking to it. But what I thought was incredible was using it for cooking and not in the way of like looking up a traditional recipe, for example. So at Google DeepMind's office, they have a kitchen that's just a set so they can try out the product. And there we made mocktails. And what was cool is I was able to show Astra the exact ingredients that I had. And then I asked it to come up with creative ideas of different drinks that I could make and then take it a step further by asking it to brainstorm the names of those drinks. Make the drinks Taylor Swift themed. Certainly. We can name the cranberry apple spritzer Red Taylor's version. That's pretty good. And call the syrup based drink the champagne problem spritzer. Damn, frost to it. That was creative. That blew my mind. And then immediately my mind was racing of like other things that I could do with it being context aware. Like for example, could I take Astro to the gym with me, show up my squat or a deadlift or another move and ask it to correct my form? 
that would be unbelievable. And this is all built on Gemini, which is Google's like large language model. That's a very general model. But the interesting thing here and where I feel like this really will unlock is having Astra be built upon other models that Google DeepMind is also working on. Like for example, if it was able to integrate with AlphaFold, I think that that would unlock a lot for scientists. AlphaFold is the Google DeepMind model that just won the Nobel Prize for scientific research. Basically was able to decode every single protein known to man. This is something that used to take PhD students seven years. It's actually one of the biggest breakthroughs in science and technology in the last like 100 years. It could likely help us cure things like Alzheimer's or dementia or other like protein based diseases. It's pretty incredible. Like I just get so excited thinking about that. And so with Astra, one of the things that I'm thinking about is that it's kind of lacking the specificity of those models. Like it's built on Gemini. So it knows things like that the general large language model knows, but the real unlock will be when it's able to also tap into more specific large language models. I would love if Astra had that ability. Right now you can kind of force it to have that ability by showing it a book or a textbook and saying, summarize this. But okay, so we see this in the phone at Google DeepMind's office and we all think it's pretty amazing, like me and the few other creators that were there. But it feels like you're living life a little bit through a phone. Like you have to hold up your phone, now you're viewing your whole world through this screen. The real unlock comes when the phone goes away. And then glasses enter the scene. So with glasses, you could pop them on and suddenly you have cameras that are experiencing the world. So Google showed me a very early prototype of this. These are actually their competitors, the Ray-Ban Metas, which are built on Meta's large language model. And we actually have a whole video on this on the channel. But the Google ones were interesting because they had a heads up display. I don't think that people give Google enough credit for Google Glass, which came out like over a decade ago with how early that was. And the product did not do that well with customers. But this one feels like reinvention of that. Having it on your face unlocks two really important things that I think will genuinely change our lives. The first one is the ability to not have to live your life through your phone and the ability to use two hands. When I was trying to make that mocktail drink, it was actually super annoying to have to hold the phone and then like do everything with one hand. And the second thing that that unlocks is the ability to just wear them for longer periods of time. So the example that Google showed in that advertisement was dropping your keys in the room and then being like, oh no, I forgot my keys, where are they? And I have it all captured on the glasses. Or like, I go to work events all the time. I meet like hundreds of people every single month. It'd be really cool if it was able to tell me who I've met and remember like information about them. And the other one that will change a lot is the live translation feature. So because it has a heads up display where you can actually see text while you're wearing the glasses, if someone talks to you in a different language, in real time, the glasses can actually show you what they're saying in your own language. That's going to break so many language barriers in a really incredible way. And I think it will just keep getting better and improving. So I'm so excited about that. There's no timeline for when the glasses are coming out. And DeepMind does a lot of like research based projects where they just show you what's possible, but they don't actually sell it to the consumer. So I hope that they come out soon. I think that there's a lot of potential with them, but I think that there's also going to be this barrier of getting people on board with wearing glasses. And I think that there are a lot of ethical considerations to be aware of. So here's some of the things that I think will come up as we start wearing glasses everywhere because if the technology is as good as I think it will be, I do see a world in like the next decade where everyone is wearing smart glasses all the time. The first one is privacy. Like if you are wearing something all the time, is it a dystopian reality where your glasses know everything about you and your life and they're constantly recording? I don't think that a lot of people are going to want to live in that world. I don't even know if I want to live in that world. Right now, Astra has a 10 minute memory, which basically means that if you show it new information, it will remember it for 10 minutes, which is very different from its long-term memory. I actually interviewed the engineers working on this product and I asked them to explain the differences between like memory of like it remembering Bushoi's name versus like longer term memory of it remembering facts. So that will be the first barrier. Like maybe there's a way to like turn that on and off for surgeons, they could throw on these glasses and then get advice or tips or be able to like watch back a surgery and know what went well, and what didn't go well. I think the second thing to consider is access to other applications. So the reason why I think that Google can win the AI arms race, despite a lot of the negative sentiment online is because of all of their other products that work together. So if you have Google AI, then that could also integrate with your calendar or with your YouTube applications or um, with your Gmail app. There's so many cross platform integrations that could kind of make this like the universal control assistant in a way that ChatGPT currently can't. It doesn't feel like Google is utilizing that advantage enough. Like, all of those integrations would really make it feel like you have an assistant curated to you and that would elevate the product. But I think that as you do that, it can also become a little bit more like dystopian in some people's eyes of it knowing like every single thing about your life. And so as society goes on, it's going to be up to us to figure out how we use the technology and where we draw the line. The second thing that I thought about immediately when trying out the products is the fact that there's only one voice and it's a female voice. Feels like a lot of these assistants go towards a female voice and I don't love that that's the default. I think that it can kind of like reinforce a gender norm around assistants and voices. I know that's not like the biggest deal in the world, 
but I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. And I actually know that Google is working on other voices to come. So with some of their other assistants, they already have multiple voices. And I think it's really important with Astra that they come out with multiple voices. And so I left the London office feeling like I just held a glimpse of the future and that there's this tiny team in a random office in London that is creating technology that's going to impact billions of people. I know that there's a lot of mixed sentiment around AI and I think that there's genuine concern and things that we need to consider, but I also really feel like AI is changing our world in a ton of positive ways and there's never been a better time to be alive. I think it's really going to fundamentally improve the way that we prevent diseases, the way that we get healthier, the way that we learn things, the way that we connect with people. There's so much upside to be had. And so staying up to date with what's actually going on and figuring out how to use the tools and how to jet fuel your own performance with them is going to be the way, in my opinion, that you can win this decade. We currently have an interview with Demis, who's the CEO of DeepMind in the early stages in the work. So subscribe if you wanna see that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna check out another video on AI um, and how Google's Gemini can press ChatGPT, you can click right here and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.